From number one internationally best-selling author of Glucose Revolution, a four-week, four-step program for living a healthier, happier life with balanced blood sugar including over 100 recipes, an interactive workbook, and the guidance to make the new science of nutrition practical for everyone, Robert H. Lustig, MD, MSL, New York Times best-selling author of Fat Chance. Do you suffer from cravings, chronic fatigue, or sugar addiction? Do you sometimes wake up in the morning feeling unable to face the day? Most of the population is stuck on a glucose roller coaster. In her first book, the instant number one internationally best-selling glucose revolution, Jessie Inchorsk offered a revolutionary framework for healing through science-backed nutrition hacks. Now, in the Glucose Goddess Method, she shares the best practical guide for managing glucose to maximize health and longevity. David Sinclair, PhD, New York Times best-selling author of Lifespan, with this four-week program to incorporating the principles of how to avoid glucose spikes into your everyday life. Complete with 100 recipes and an interactive workbook, you are guided through four simple, science-proven ways to steady your blood sugar, gaining boundless energy, curbing your cravings, clearing your skin, slowing your aging process, and sleeping better than you ever have before. You will create positive new habits for life. The best part? You won't be counting calories and can still eat all the foods you love. This proven method will have you reading the Hebrew alphabet in six weeks or less. The Hebrew alphabet can look intimidating, but this book will have you reading it in six weeks. Even people who have tried other books without success have learned to read Hebrew using this book. Here's what makes it different. Fun memory tricks make it super simple to remember the sounds of the letters. Pace, the book is divided into 12 simple lessons. Two a week for six weeks. The cheerful style of the book is great for adults and children alike. From week one you are given words you can read from the Hebrew Bible. The charming illustrations make learning Hebrew a pleasure. At the end of six weeks you will be able to read from the original Hebrew Bible, Psalms or the Siddur, Jewish prayer book, and you will have taken the first big step towards learning the Hebrew language. This method has already been used by thousands of students who have successfully learned to read Hebrew. The rains have halted, and all that's left is mud. Mud dot and the tracks of the Goblin Lord's army. They have finally come to Lee's corps, pursued by Tyrion Veltras and his forces. In their path lies the wandering inn. Erin Solstice will have to find a way to survive the coming conflict, and save her friends. The question is, at what cost? Demigods Nico Di Angelo and Will Solus must endure the terrors of Tartarus in their attempt to rescue an old friend in this thrilling adventure, set in the funny, mythical and action-packed world of Percy Jackson. As the son of Hades, Nico Di Angelo been through so much, from the premature deaths of his mother and sister, to being outed against his will, to losing his friend Jason during the trials of Apollo. But there is a ray of sunshine in his life, literally, his boyfriend, Will Solace, the son of Apollo. Together, the two demigods can overcome any obstacle or foe. At least, that's been the case so far. Now Nico is being plagued by a voice calling out to him from Tartarus, the lowest part of the underworld. He thinks he knows who it is, a reformed titan named Bob whom Percy and Annabeth had to leave behind when they escaped Hades's realm. Nico's dreams and Rachel Dare's latest prophecy leave little doubt in Nico's mind that Bob is in some kind of trouble. Nico has to go on this quest, whether Mr. D and Chiron like it or not. And of course Will insists on coming with. But can a being made of light survive in the darkest part of the world? And what does the prophecy mean that Nico will have to leave something of equal value behind? Nico will have to face demons, both internal and external, as his relationship with Will is tested to the core in this standalone adventure featuring two of the most popular characters in the Percy Jackson saga. Against a deadly alliance of Japanese smarts and KGB savagery, they were striking back, with everything they had. Kyushu Electronics it seemed a most unlikely target for the world's most feared team of fighting men. 
but the Soviets have turned it into a fortress where the country's top scientists are forced to complete a top-secret project, a supercomputer with enough bite to turn the Star Wars defense system into space debris. No one had to tell the Black Berets they'd be fighting the battle of their lives. For the five warriors had come to the land of the samurai and the ninja assassin ready to practice their own code of lethal arts, to die with honor or kill with a vengeance. A teenager explores the darkness hidden within his hometown as he searches for a missing private detective and a kidnapped woman in this fresh supernatural thriller from a best-selling author the New York Times book review calls, compulsively readable. For a teenager in a small Midwestern town, a summer internship working for a private detective seems like a dream come true. He tags along as the detective investigates a shocking kidnapping, the biggest case the town has seen in decades. At first, it's all thrilling fun dot until the detective vanishes. Now, our narrator must search for answers himself, even as he is dismissed by the police and his friends and his family worry. Determined to find the answers, he embarks on a journey through the occult that shines a light on his town's deadly secrets. From an author who consistently offers eerie, gripping storytelling, Dean Koontz, number one New York Times best-selling author, in a town like yours is a coming-of-age tale of terror that you won't soon forget. Geschichten Machen die Welt zu einem besseren Ort. New York in April 2020. Warren des Erz 10 Lockdowns treffen sich die Bewohner eins Meets House is a Benz auf DEM Dach und Erzalen einander Geschichten. Jeder Mieter und Jed Mieter in Steuert ein Jeskicht Bay, war oder zu mindest gut erfinden, und ein News de Cameron für Unseer Zeit nimmt seinen Anfang. Die Erzalungen sind so unterschiedlich wie die Menschen, die sich hier versammeln, und über die Geschichten in dieser Ausnahmesituation entwickelt sich ein ganz neuer Zusammenhalt. Almalik findet die Rund zu einer unerwarteten Gemeinschaft und Antalnam füreinander. Ihr seht auf dem Dach wird ihnen nicht mehr wegen der Pandemie für immer in Erinnerung bleiben. The Spellbinding, bold new retelling of the story of Lord Byron and the Shelleys, from the perspective of Claire Clement, the incredible woman that history tried to forget. Perfect for listeners of Hamnet, Boog and Wolf Hall. Geneva. They always come back to it, somehow. They are the only ones who know what took place there. 1816, a massive volcanic eruption has caused the worst storms that Europe has seen in decades, yet Percy and Mary Shelley have chosen to visit the infamous Lord Byron at his villa on Lake Geneva. It wasn't their idea, Mary's 18-year-old stepsister, Claire Clement, insisted. But the reason for Claire's visit is more pressing than a summer escape with the most famous writers in the world. She's pregnant with Byron's child, a child Byron doesn't want and scarcely believes is his own. Claire has the world in her grasp. This trip should have given her everything she ever dreamed of. But within days, her life will be in ruins. History has all but forgotten her story, but she will not be silenced. What did you do to Eva? What could you do to me? Journalist Anna Tate is assigned as a ghostwriter to Dr. Nate Reed, a neuroscientist renowned for his work at the Payne Laboratory. Damaged by her own past, Anna finds herself becoming obsessed with Nate's late wife Eva Reed, a former patient of Nate's who was unable to experience pain. As she strips away the secrets of their relationship, she makes a shocking discovery, and the raw truth of each is revealed. You can't hurt my so smart, sophisticated suspense thriller for those who enjoyed A.J. Finn's The Woman in the Window, J.P. Delaney's The Girl Before and Alex Mikolaid's The Silent Patient. A high-stakes caper about a young man trying to outrun his past and stake a claim for his future through a dangerous heist. Paul has always been a bit of an outsider. As an Irish child living in England, he didn't fit in with his peers, but he didn't fit in with his family, either. Now in his twenties, about to graduate from university, he's not sure what to do with a few useless degrees and a girlfriend whose drug habits are quickly becoming a problem. So when a mysterious man from Belfast offers him what seems like an easy job watching a building in exchange for quite a lot of cash, Paul takes the opportunity. But the job quickly spirals out of control, and Paul runs afoul of a very dangerous figure in the criminal underworld. Paul is nothing if not clever, though, and, along with a close-knit crew of Irish travellers, he comes up with a plan to get himself out of trouble and to take down a drug lord all at once. At first everything goes well, 
but it doesn't take long for the perfect plan to go sideways. Paul finds himself facing dangerous choices, with the lives of those he loves hanging in the balance. A vintage crime, Black Lizard original. The worst nightmare has finally come true. Someone of immense wealth and power has illegally gained possession of five atomic bombs. The theft seems the work of some third-world lunatic. Until a deadly raid on a Libyan terrorist training camp proves to be only a warm-up for the main event in Portugal. Not even the Black Berets want to consider the consequences of failure. Can they find the bombs in time and crush a ruthless international cabal? Can five renegade commandos stop a summit of terror called by a madman bent on auctioning off doomsday to the highest bidder? Vanji's ghosts blend science fiction, fantasy, a bit of horror, and stark, crisp contemporary naturalism and will appeal to fans of Lucius Shepard, Theodore Sturgeon, Mike Carey, Elizabeth Hand, and Paul Tremblay. Evangeline, or Vanji for short, is under the cruel domination of uncaring step-parents. Suspected of being autistic, Vanji's lack of effect is actually a result of being able to see deep into the multiverse. She is bewildered by the sensory input from a plethora of alternate time streams. Soon, she will exhibit a strange power, activated only under extreme shock conditions. Vanji can project her consciousness, herself or soul, from one timeline to another, fleeing danger for safety. This power will soon be exploited by a number of shady characters, as guardianship of Vanji passes from one set of exploitive adults to another. But as Vanji ages and lives through numerous trials and adventures, she becomes more and more self-assured and powerful, talents that will eventually bring her head to head against a rival of her own kind. Don't believe everything you see in the heart-stopping thriller from the queen of the big reveal. Please take care of my baby. But don't try to find me. You'll put him in danger. X. Profiler and therapist Kuzlashibai is shocked when she finds a baby on the back seat of her car, with an unsigned note asking her to take care of him. Kuz has a pretty good idea who the mother is, Brandy, a popular social media star with a troubled background, who once lived in Kuz's house. Recently, the seemingly bright and bubbly Brandy's videos changed in tone before she completely dropped out of the limelight. Kuz is beginning to understand why. And if the internet rumors are true, Brandy's life could be in real danger. Kuz is torn. Should she simply take care of the baby, as she's been asked to do, and wait to hear from his mother? Or should she put the baby and her whole family at risk by using, less than legal, contacts from her previous job to save this young woman? Time is running out for Brandy. Can Kuz find her before it's too late? This is the stunning emotional thriller from the queen of the big reveal. The town was once a hub of industry. A place where men toiled underground in darkness, picking and shoveling in the dust and the slack. It was dangerous and backbreaking work, but it meant something. Once, the town provided, it was important, it had purpose. But what is it now? Brothers Alex and Brian have spent their whole life in the town where their father lived and his father, too. Still reeling from the collapse of his personal life, Alex is now in his middle age and must reckon with a part of his identity he has long tried to mask. Simon is the only child of Alex and had practically no memory of the mines. Now in his twenties and working in a call center, he derives passion from his side hustle in sex work and his weekly drag gigs as the extravagant put Tanner short dress. Set across three generations of South Yorkshire mining family, Andrew McMillan's short and magnificent debut novel is a lament for a lost way of a life as well as a celebration of resilience and the possibility for change. Brought to you by Penguin. Set in a Lower East Side tenement in the early days of the pandemic, 14 Days is a dazzling, heartwarming novel with an unusual twist. Each character has been secretly written by a different, major literary voice, from Margaret Atwood and Douglas Preston to Dave Eggers and Celeste Ng. One week into the COVID-19 shutdown, tenants of a Lower East Side apartment building in Manhattan have begun to gather on the rooftop and tell stories. With each passing night, more and more neighbors gather, bringing chairs and milk crates and overturned pails. Gradually the tenants, some of whom have barely spoken to each other, become real neighbors. 
In this D. Cameron-like serial novel, General Editor Margaret Atwood, Authors Guild President Douglas Preston, and a star-studded list of contributors create a beautiful ode to the people who couldn't get away from the city when the pandemic hit. A dazzling, heartwarming collection, 14 Days reveals how beneath the loss and suffering, some communities managed to become stronger, from the authors of the best-selling series C-H-E-R-I-N-G-H-A-M. This compilation contains episodes 4 to 6. Murder wore a mask. Lavinia's annual mask ball at Midworth Manor is a highlight of the season, but the lavish party comes to a full stop when one of the guests is found dead down by the lake. Harry and Kat suspect that the dead man was the victim of a clever case of murder. And the killer's work is not yet done. Deadly Cargo Midworth's Excelsior Radio Company is world famous for its expensive radio phonographs. But then its delivery lorries start being hijacked, and the very future of the company is in doubt. Is this just about stolen radios, or is there something more secret and dangerous going on? Danger in the air. The famous aviatrix Amelia Earhart has come to England on a mission to raise money for her planned continent-spanning air rally. But when Amelia's life is threatened, Harry and Kat must figure out who is behind this deadly game before it turns fatal. Nathaniel Parker, born in 1962, graduated from the London Academy of Music and Dramatic Art and went on to join the Royal Shakespeare Company. His television career began in 1988 when he played Flying Officer Flash Gordon in the LWT miniseries Piece of Cake. He is also the lead in the BBC series The Inspector Linlay Mysteries, based on the novels by Elizabeth George. Nathaniel Parker has an extensive list of audiobooks to his credit, ranging from the classics of Charles Dickens and Thomas Hardy to more modern writings and children's books. Will Trent and Sarah Linton are back. This is the 11th electrifying thriller featuring GBI investigator Will Trent and medical examiner Sarah Linton from the international number one best-selling author Karen Slaughter. After that night, nothing was ever the same again. Fifteen years ago, Sarah Linton's life changed forever when a celebratory night out ended in a violent attack that tore her world apart. Since then, Sarah has remade her life. A successful doctor, engaged to a man she loves, she has finally managed to leave the past behind her. Until one evening, on call in the ER, everything changes. Sarah battles to save a broken young woman who's been brutally attacked. But as the investigation progresses, led by GBI Special Agent Will Trent, it becomes clear that Danny Cooper's assault is uncannily linked to Sarah's. And it seems the past isn't going to stay buried forever. Someone's killing Treadstone agents and Jason Bourne may be next on the list in this latest electrifying entry in Robert Ludlum's number one New York Times best-selling series. Around the world, Treadstone agents are being hunted down and murdered. Someone high up in the U.S. government is erasing all evidence of a shocking mission from Jason Bourne's past known as Defiance, including Bourne himself. Staying one step ahead of a team of killers, Bourne follows a global trail that leads him to one of the government's darkest secrets. But exposing the truth about the Defiance mission will also bring Bourne face to face with his archenemy, the assassin known as Lennon, for a final deadly confrontation. A Dr. David Hunter novel, the David Hunter television series The Chemistry of Death debuts on Paramount this January. The dead didn't frighten me. It was the living that gave me nightmares. An atmospheric and utterly gripping mystery set in the shadows of the Welsh mountains that will chill the listener to their very bones. Driving back through Wales in a fierce winter storm, forensic anthropologist David Hunter is forced to seek shelter at a remote village in Erery Mountains. But a one-night stopover becomes something very different after a gruesome discovery in depths of the local forest. With communications down and the only road washed out by the storm, Hunter is unsure who, if anyone, he can trust. And as long-buried secrets begin to emerge, he knows that, whatever dark past the isolated community might be hiding, there's no one he can call on for help. This time he's on his own. Forensic anthropologist David Hunter is back in this pulse-pounding thriller that explores the wildness and danger of rural life and the intensity of small-town claustrophobia. France's favorite country cop, Bruno, faces a dangerous threat to the town he polices and the people he protects. Loved by millions, the Dordan mysteries are the perfect combination of mystery and escapism. The event of the Perigord tourist season is to be the reenactment of the liberation of the historic town of Sarlat from the English in 1370. 
but it all goes wrong when the man playing the part of the French general is almost killed in the heat of the action. The immediate question for Chief of Police Bruno Courages is was this an accident, or deliberate? The stakes rise when Bruno learns that the man, Kirkelin, was running French Elon, the secret French electronic intelligence base nearby, after being recruited from a brilliant Silicon Valley career. His old Silicon Valley colleagues have been invited to stay at the luxurious local chateau of Rufiak as his guests to enjoy the Sarlat show. As he investigates, Bruno discovers that Kirkland's wound was faked, that he is alive and well and secretly negotiating a massive deal to build a semiconductor industry in France. But then a whole new and dangerous player emerges, determined to nip the deal in the bud. The grand master of gripping fiction is back. International number one bestseller Ken Follett returns to Kingsbridge with an epic tale of revolution and a cast of unforgettable characters. Revolution is in the air. 1792, a tyrannical government is determined to make England a mighty commercial empire. In France, Napoleon Bonaparte begins his rise to power and with descent rife, France's neighbors are on high alert. Kingsbridge is on the edge. Unprecedented industrial change sweeps the land making the lives of the workers in Kingbridge's prosperous cloth mills a misery. Rampant modernization and dangerous new machinery are rendering jobs obsolete and tearing families apart. Tyranny is on the horizon. Now, as international conflict nears, a story of a small group of Kingsbridge people, including spinner Sal Clidero, weaver David Shoveler and Kit, Sal's inventive and headstrong son, will come to define the struggle of a generation as they seek enlightenment and fight for a future free from oppression. Taking the listener straight into the heart of history with the fifth novel in the groundbreaking Kingsbridge series, The Armor of Light is master storyteller Ken Follett's most ambitious novel to date. For the first time ever, Found Audio presents a complete transcription of the unsettling audio recordings of a mysterious unnamed adventure journalist and his decades-long pursuit of the Borgesian city of dreams, alongside analysis from audio expert Amrapali Anna Singh. A best book of 2017, Writer's Bone. A mysterious work of metafiction. Dizzying, arresting, and defiantly bold. Laura Pearson, Chicago Tribune. Amrapali Anna Singh is an historian and analyst capable of discerning the most cryptic and trivial details from audio recordings. One day, a mysterious man appears at her office in Dutch Harbor, Alaska, having traveled a great distance to bring her three Type 4 audio cassettes that bear the stamp of a library in Buenos Aires that may or may not exist. On the cassettes is the deposition of an adventure journalist and his obsessive pursuit of an amorphous, legendary, and puzzling city of dreams. Spanning decades, his quest leads him from a snake hunter in the Louisiana bayou to the walled city of Kowloon on the eve of its destruction, from the singing dunes of Mongolia to a chess tournament in Istanbul. The deposition also begs the question, who is making the recording, and why? Despite being explicitly instructed not to, Curiosity gets the better of Singh and she mails a transcription of the cassettes with her analysis to an acquaintance before vanishing. The man who bore the cassettes, too, has disappeared. The journalist was unnamed. Here, for the first time, is the complete archival manuscript of the mysterious recordings accompanied by Singh's analysis. Ilona Andrews invites you to experience the first novel in the number one New York Times best-selling series featuring the intriguing fantasy world of mercenary Kate Daniels. When the magic is up, rogue mags cast their spells and monsters appear, while guns refuse to fire and cars fail to start. But then technology returns, and the magic recedes as unpredictably as it arose, leaving all kinds of paranormal problems in its wake. Kate Daniels is a down-on-her-luck mercenary who makes her living cleaning up these magical problems. But when Kate's guardian is murdered, her quest for justice draws her into a power struggle between two strong factions within Atlanta's magic circles. The Masters of the Dead, necromancers who can control vampires, and the Pack, a paramilitary clan of shape-changers, blame each other for a series of bizarre killings, and the death of Kate's guardian may be part of the same mystery. Pressured by both sides to find the killer, Kate realizes she's way out of her league, but she wouldn't have it any other way. Everyone deserves a second chance, or at least that's what ex-vicar Lionel Lawrence believes when he decides to open up the old rectory to a stream of young offenders. Lionel only wants to help these poor souls, but his good deed quickly spirals into a deadly mix of blackmail and murder. Detective Chief Inspector Barnaby is sure he knows who is behind the disappearance of Lionel's latest young charge. 
Will this elusive suspect prove to be the incarnation of evil itself? Introducing Detective Inspector Vera Stanhub. The Crow Trap is the first book in and Cleve's Vera Stanhub series. Everyone has something to hide. Three very different women come together at an isolated cottage on the North Pennines to complete an environmental survey. Three women who each know the meaning of betrayal. Rachel, the team leader, is still reeling after a double betrayal by her lover and boss. And, a botanist, sees the survey as a chance to indulge in a little deception of her own. And then there is Grace, a strange, uncommunicative young woman, hiding plenty of her own secrets. Rachel is the first to arrive at the cottage, but when she gets there she is shocked to discover an apparent suicide. But then another death occurs, and a fourth woman enters the picture, the unconventional detective inspector Vera Stanhub, who must piece together the truth from these women's tangled lives. Q. Narrated by Harry Treadaway, who stars as David Hunter in the Paramount Plus adaptation of The Chemistry of Death. On his way back from an ongoing investigation into a serial killer in Scotland, forensic anthropologist David Hunter is asked to examine a fire death on the remote Hebridean island of Runa. Told only that there is something strange about it, Hunter is intrigued enough to accept, despite the worsening winter weather conditions and the strain it will put on his already troubled relationship with his girlfriend, Jenny. After a rough sea journey, he and the two police officers who accompany him are met by Brody, a retired DI who now lives on the island, and who discovered the body. Warned that it will be unlike anything he's seen before, Hunter is still unprepared for what confronts him at the abandoned old crofter's cottage, human remains that have been burnt to the bone, except for both feet and a single hand that have somehow survived unscathed. Even more inexplicably, nothing else in the cottage has been damaged by the fire. From New York Times best-selling author Adrian McKinty comes the next thrilling mystery in the Edgar Award-winning Sean Duffy detective series. Slamming the door on the hellscape of 1980s Belfast, Detective Inspector Sean Duffy hopes that the 1990s are going to be better for him and the people of Northern Ireland. As a Catholic cop in the mainly Protestant RUC he still has a target on his back, and with a steady girlfriend and a child the stakes couldn't be higher. After handling a mercurial triple agent and surviving the riots and bombings and assassination attempts, all Duffy wants to do now is live. But in his final days in charge of Carrick Fergus CID, a missing persons report captures his attention. A 15-year-old traveler girl has disappeared and no one seems to give a damn about it. Duffy begins to dig and uncovers a disturbing underground of men who seem to know her very well. The deeper he digs the more sinister it all gets. Is finding out the truth worth it if D.I. Duffy is going to get himself and his colleagues killed? Can he survive one last case before getting himself and his family out over the water? In 2008, nine mountaineers failed to return from a winter backpacking trip in the New Mexico mountains. At their last campsite, searchers found a bizarre scene. Something had appeared at the door of their tent so terrifying that it impelled them to slash their way out and flee barefoot to certain death in a blizzard. Despite a diligent search, only six bodies were found, three violently crushed and missing eyes and tongues. The case, given the code name, Dead Mountain by the FBI, was never solved. Now, two more bodies from the lost expedition are unexpectedly discovered in a cave, one a grisly suicide. Young FBI agent Corey Swanson teams up with archaeologist Nora Kelly to investigate what really happened on that fateful trip 15 years ago, and to find the ninth victim. But their search awakens a long slumbering evil, which pursues Cory and Nora with a vengeance, determined to prevent the final missing corpse from ever coming to light. From number one best selling author Kathy Rice comes the new high stakes thriller featuring forensic anthropologist Temperance Brennan. Even on an island paradise, danger still lurks. Called in to examine what is left of a body struck by lightning, Temp traces an unusual tattoo to its source and is soon embroiled in a much larger case. Young men, tourists, have been disappearing on the islands of Turks and Caicos for years. Seven years ago, the first victim was found with both hands cut off, the other visitors vanished without a trace. But recently, tantalizing leads have emerged and only Temp can unravel them. Maddeningly, the victims seem to have nothing in common other than the unusual locations where their bodies are eventually found, and the fact that the young men all seem to be the least likely to be involved in foul play. Do these attacks have something to do with the island's seething culture of gang violence? Temp ISNT so sure.
and then she turns up disturbing clues that what's at stake may actually have global significance. It isnt long before the sound of a ticking clock grows menacingly loud, and then Temp herself becomes a target. When a bank teller is found dead in Portland Harbor, Officer Brandon Blake defies orders in Port City Rat Trap, a Brandon Blake mystery from Jerry Boyle. Present day, Portland, Maine. Having just returned to duty following the fatal shooting of a teen, Officer Brandon Blake is eager to settle into normal when a local bank teller is found dead, floating near his liverboard cabin cruiser in Portland Harbor. The death ruled accidental, Blake, who has been warned about pushing beyond his jurisdiction, wonders how the young woman could have accidentally fallen over a five-foot fence. Blake's ensuing investigation puts him at loggerheads with his own department as well as the New York City mob. But as he continues to dig into the case, he may be digging his own grave. Publisher note, Jerry Boyle's journalistic background brings a gritty authenticity to his writing that transports readers into a realm they won't want to leave. Fans of Michael Connolly, Ian Rankin, and Lee Child, as well as Ed McBain, will enjoy the Brandon Blake series. Gritty and unrelenting, Jerry Boyle's Port City Crossfire will have you turning pages well into the night. Tilda Bruce Robert Coffin, Agatha Award-nominated author of Beyond the Truth. The Brandon Blake Mystery Series. Port City Crossfire. Port City Rat Trap. The long-awaited sequel to A Column of Fire, The Armor of Light, heralds a new dawn for Kingsbridge, England, where progress clashes with tradition, class struggles push into every part of society, and war in Europe engulfs the entire continent and beyond. The spinning jenny was invented in 1770, and with that, new era of manufacturing and industry changed lives everywhere within a generation. A world filled with unrest wrestles for control over this new world order. A mother's husband is killed in a work accident due to negligence. A young woman fights to fund her school for impoverished children. A well-intentioned young man unexpectedly inherits a failing business. One man ruthlessly protects his wealth no matter the cost. All the while war cries are heard from France. As Napoleon sets forth a violent master plan to become emperor of the world. As institutions are challenged and toppled in unprecedented fashion, ripples of change ricochet through our characters' lives as they are left to reckon with the future and a world they must rebuild from the ashes of war. Over 30 years ago, Ken Follett published his most popular novel, The Pillars of the Earth. Now, with this electrifying addition to the Kingsbridge series, we are plunged into the battlefield between compassion and greed, love and hate, progress and tradition. It is through each character that we are given a new perspective to the seismic shifts that shook the world in 19th century Europe. The star system of Apollo has fallen. Her fleets are scattered and her enemies victorious. Apollo's last hope, an exile mercenary coming home at last. Ace pilot Kira Demisi fled her home system of Apollo five years ago. Betrayed by her own government and one step ahead of enemy assassins, she smuggled a squadron of starfighters into the outer rim and forged a mercenary fleet of old friends and new alike. Many of the aces of Apollo's war against Brisinger weren't as lucky. Kira has a new home, but a scheme hatched by her enemies has brought her to the edge of her old stomping grounds. This close to Apollo, she's one of the first to hear the devastating news, Brisinger has achieved its ultimate victory and captured her home. To take a star system should be impossible, but the reality is clear. With family, friends, and old comrades in the hands of the Brisinger Kaiserai, Kira mobilizes her mercenary fleet to seek out the scattered remains of Apollo's fleets and allies. Even if she can manage the merely difficult and bring the broken factions together, the hard truth remains, Brisinger's victory was impossible. To undo it, Kira will have to duplicate it. A new town, new friends, new challenges. And a new heart-stopping adventure from number one New York Times best-selling author, Ilona Andrews. Kate, Curran, and Conlon may have left Atlanta for Wilmington, but the usual magic mayhem has also hitched a ride. Kate and Curran have just settled into their new home and their low profile when a local businessman approaches them with an offer they can't refuse. A mysterious evil has spawned in the nearby forest and is holding a defenseless town hostage. The due date is rapidly approaching. It's exactly the kind of fight the Leonards can't resist, not for the prize the town offers, but for the people who will surely die if they ignore it. If they succeed, they'll be rescuing an entire community and can build a strong new base for their family and the Wilmington Pack. If they fail dot well, fail is a four-letter word. Nothing comes without a price.
Now Kate must decide if she has what it takes to pay it. One New York Times best-selling author John Grisham delivers high-flying international suspense in a stunning new legal thriller that marks the return of Mitch McDear, the brilliant hero of the firm. What became of Mitch and Abby McDear after they exposed the crimes of Memphis law firm Bendini, Lambert v. E. Locke and fled the country? The answer is in The Exchange, the riveting sequel to The Firm, the blockbuster thriller that launched the career of America's favorite storyteller. It is now 15 years later, and Mitch and Abby are living in Manhattan, where Mitch is a partner at the largest law firm in the world. When a mentor in Rome asks him for a favor that will take him far from home, Mitch finds himself at the center of a sinister plot that has worldwide implications, and once again endangers his colleagues, friends, and family. Mitch has become a master at staying one step ahead of his adversaries, but this time there's nowhere to hide. The woman's bright blonde hair floats in the breeze. She almost looks like she could be resting on the soft green grass. But her brown eyes stare unblinking up at the sky, and the final cut across her mouth is dark with blood. Her words silenced forever. Late one evening, as the final church bell rings out, Sandra Deakin's cold and lifeless body is found in the overgrown graveyard with multiple stab wounds. When Detective Kim Stone rushes to the scene, the violence of the attack convinces her that this murder was deeply personal what could have caused such hate. As the team dig into Sandra's life, they discover she believed she could communicate with the dead. Was that why she was targeted? The last people to see her alive were a group of women who had a session with her the night before she was killed, and as Kim and her team pay them a visit, they soon learn each of the women is lying about why they wanted Sandra's help. Kim realizes she must dig deep and open her mind to every avenue if she's going to stand a chance at solving this case. And when she learns that Sandra was banned from the church grounds and had been receiving death threats too, she's ever more certain that Sandra's gifts are at the heart of everything. But just when she thinks she's found a lead, the broken body of a 19-year-old boy is found outside a call center, a single slash across his mouth just like Sandra's. Kim knows they are now racing against time to understand what triggered these attacks and to stop a twisted killer. But they might be too late. Just as Kim sits down at a local psychic show, she discovers something that makes her blood run cold. Both Sandra and the call center were named in an article about frauds. And this show stars the next name on the list. She looks around the audience with a feeling of utter dread, certain the killer is among them. The stunning third book in the sexy, action-packed Crescent City series, following the global bestsellers House of Earth and Blood and House of Sky and Breath. Bryce Quinlan never expected to see a world other than Midgard, but now that she has, all she wants is to get back. Everything she loves is in Midgard, her family, her friends, her mate. Stranded in a strange new world, she's going to need all her wits about her to get home again. And that's no easy feat when she has no idea who to trust. Hunt Athala has found himself in some deep holes in his life, but this one might be the deepest of all. After a few brief months with everything he ever wanted, he's in the Asteris dungeons again, stripped of his freedom and without a clue as to Bryce's fate. He's desperate to help her, but until he can escape the Asteris leash, his hands are quite literally tied. In this sexy, breathtaking sequel to the number one bestsellers House of Earth and Blood and House of Sky and Breath, Sarah J. Mass's Crescent City series reaches new heights as Bryce and Hunt's world is brought to the brink of collapse with its future resting on their shoulders. A vicious romance imbued with Norse magic, thievery, and necromancy. When Taylor Nilsson stumbles upon an abandoned corpse hidden in her friend's empty house, she can't ignore the energy lingering around the broken, albeit familiar, body. Entranced by the promise of ritualistic power, she seizes her chance to secure a vow. Miraculously, Hell, the goddess of death, grants Taylor an audience. But Lincoln Stone has no interest in becoming a magical sentry and raising him from the dead comes with violent consequences. Lincoln's enthusiasm for demonology is an immediate threat to Taylor's Norse roots, instigating a struggle for dominance that tears a rift between the witch and her guard. But when a mysterious neo-church arrives in Gideon, Taylor catches wind of a rare relic. So, she strikes a deal with her unruly vor hoping to mend their strained relationship. Work together. Steal the breath of Judas. Control the dead. As the pair orbit each other, magically bound and incompatible, Taylor and Lincoln infiltrate Haven, but when their heist becomes a hunt, Taylor isnt sure if she's the predator or prey.
glitzy parties, sightseeing at the Statue of Liberty and strolls through Central Park with Gladstone the Bulldog. Lady Eleanor Swift is loving her first trip to the city that never sleeps until she witnesses a murder. After crossing from England on the SS Celestiana, Lady Eleanor Swift sets up her home away from home in a lavish apartment in New York City. She is soon the toast of the town, with no high-class soiree complete without her presence. Of course, she drags her butler Clifford and Gladstone the Bulldog along to every party too. But when she witnesses the charming doorman of her building, Marty, knocked down and killed in a hit-and-run, she finds fashionable society suddenly closes rank. The only local detective interested in helping her find the culprit is street-smart beat cop, Officer Belowski. Resolved to get justice for Marty and his family, Eleanor searches Marty's tiny apartment and is shocked to find five rolls of banknotes tucked under the floorboards. Money talks, but Marty was struggling to make ends meet, so where did the cash come from? The next day, wealthy entrepreneur and flashy philanderer Ogden P. Delaney, a man Marty used to work for, is found dead downtown, miles away from his swanky Upper East Side mansion. Eleanor and Belowski are sure the deaths are connected, but not even Delaney's wife is willing to answer their questions. Then Eleanor is served with an eviction notice and Belowski is fired from the NYPD. It becomes clear that something is rotten in the Big Apple and Eleanor is determined to get to the core of the mystery before the murderer strikes again. Murder in Manhattan is a fun, fast-paced and twisty Golden Age cozy mystery set in New York. Fans of Agatha Christie, T. E. Kinsey and Lee Strauss will be glued to the pages. Readers cannot get enough of Verity Bright, from the number one New York Times best-selling author Brandon Sanderson comes the final book in an epic series about a girl who will travel beyond the stars to save the world she loves from destruction. Spencer made it out of the nowhere, but what she saw in the space between the stars has changed her forever. She came face to face with the Delvers and finally got answers to the questions she's had about her own strange cytonic gifts. The superiority didn't stop in its fight for galactic dominance while she was gone, though. Spencer's team, Skyward Flight, was able to hold Winsick off and even collect allies to help with the cause, but it's only a matter of time until humanity and the rest of the galaxy falls. Defeating them will require all the knowledge Spencer gathered while in the nowhere. But being cytonic is more complicated than she ever could have imagined. Now, Spencer must ask herself, how far is she willing to go for victory, if it means losing herself and her friends in the process? The final book in the Skyward series will free humanity, or see it fall forever. Number one New York Times best-selling author Danielle Steele delivers a poignant novel about a mother and daughter who must repair their relationship and find a way to follow their hearts. Oscar-winning actress Ardith Law is a Hollywood icon. Radiant at 62, she is the epitome of glamour and a highly respected artist. But her success has come at a price, she has a strained relationship with her daughter, Morgan who at 38 still blames Ardith for putting her career before being a mother. Morgan is a successful plastic surgeon in New York City, and the distance from Ardith's Bel Air mansion is not lost on either of them. Ardith became a single mother when Morgan was seven, after her unfaithful husband died in a helicopter accident. In recent years, she has found amiable companionship with fellow actor Bill West. But Ardith's comfortable world is turned upside down when she hires a temporary personal assistant, Josh Gray, while Bill is away filming in London. Josh's rough around the edges persona is the opposite of what Ardith is used to, but an unexpected tragedy brings them closer, stirring up conflicting feelings in her for this younger man. In New York, Morgan is swept off her feet by world renowned TV anchorman Ben Ryan. Though more than two decades her senior, Ben is handsome, charismatic, and just as smitten as Morgan. But when a blackmail scheme puts his career, and their relationship, on the line, Morgan doesn't know where to turn. Perhaps to her mother? As each woman navigates an unconventional romance, they cautiously approach each other on new terms and attempt to put aside their past for a new future. In Upside Down, Danielle Steele tells an unforgettable story of bold choices, second chances, and the hope of reconciliation. Can a jaded alien warrior redeem himself in order to protect the woman and children who need him? After a painful divorce, Linda takes a job as the chief administrator of a rural hospital her hard-won piece is shattered when strange black-suited men raid the maternity ward and she finds herself on board an alien spaceship. Determined to protect the women and children abducted with her, she searches desperately for a way out. 
Her hope of rescue by alien law enforcement is crushed when the patrol officer who tracks them to a seedy outpost is just interested in procuring his own human female. Her only alternative is a huge green alien with a doubtful reputation and a very friendly tail. When cynical sire warrior Zoldau is asked to track down possible corruption in the patrol, he reluctantly agrees, only to encounter the most alluring female he has ever met. She needs a hero, but has her only option. On the run with his beautiful human, her companions, and three precious infants, he realizes has never been happier. But with danger close behind and his own troubled reputation awaiting their return to civilization, is there any chance for the future he desires with his newfound family? Each book in the Treasured by the Alien series can be read as a standalone romance. This sweet and steamy HEA is intended for adults only. A blazingly original and stylish debut novel about a young man whose reality unravels when he suspects his mysterious employers have inadvertently discovered time travel and are using it to cover up a string of violent crimes. For days before Christmas, 8-year-old Bo loses his mother in a tragic accident, 28-year-old Brandon loses his job after a hostile takeover of his big media employer, and 48-year-old Blue, a key witness in a criminal trial against an infamous now-defunct tech startup, struggles to reconnect with his family. So begins Jean Wu Chang's dazzling time-bending debut that blends elements of neo-noir and speculative fiction as the lives of Bo, Brandon, and Blue begin to intersect, uncovering a network of secrets and an experimental technology that threatens to upend life itself. Intertwined with them is the saga of an iconic 80s detective show, Raider, whose star actor has imploded spectacularly after revelations of long-term concealed abuse. Flux is a haunting and sometimes shocking exploration of the cyclical nature of grief, of moving past trauma, and of the pervasive nature of whiteness within the development of Asian identity in America.